One never wanted any more Than any man who came before Yeah, life was good and fun And time was empty Till a letter by a mistake one day From a shiny town not far away Came signed with love and lipstick and perfume It said I know the lonesome glow Of country moons and slow rising suns that Make a dream and longer Which said I never see the stars And all the wishing in my heart Has gone away Except the one for you Or I've never really considered myself a, a rock star mm-hmm. And I don't know if that has anything to do with um, my womanness Right uh, my, or my internalized womanness, mm-hmm. um, or, or or just my just kind of the the, the, the scale at which I kind of, uh, because of operate as a yeah. musician, mm-hmm. you know. And the first time actually I ever considered the possibility is when my little niece introduced me to her little friends as, "This is my aunt Misha. She's a rock star," <laughs> and uh, it was like the most the most delightful thing I ever heard. Yes. But uh, to your question of like. Um, you know, things that I've experienced being a woman in the music industry that I think I would explain mm-hmm. with by being a woman. Right. And um, I think that, you know, I've been in a lot of rooms with a lot of different people and, you know, often had the experience of being the only woman in a room, for example. And, yeah, I think in those, in those contexts, um, there, there's a good thing and a bad thing. Well, I always liked my company Then loneliness felt truly free Of other people's gazes in the mirror Until mm, a story came into my head Of another life I could let that put a chase for change inside my heart. Just a slightly longer story from the book, but I also okay. have a shorter thing that's um, from a new ish story. Oh, okay. Called uh, The Woman Upstairs. So why don't you choose? What shall we. That sounds enticing. Okay. I think we have to hear the, the new short story. Well, we will uh, read the book. In a little bit, though. In its entirety. Yeah. <laughs> law courteous. <laughs> and in the case of our very first meeting, I had been quite helpful. There was no logical reason for her to want to avoid me. It's, it's become a bad thing is when I've maybe omitted my own experience right. from that collaboration equation, right? And mm-hmm. it's sort of getting so uh, preoccupied with um, making the room feel okay mm. that you're sort of simplifying it right. by taking yourself out of the equation. And starless nights led me there and led me on back city lights and starless nights in the shadow of another life. And starless nights led me there. Um, but I, I know what you're talking about with the assertiveness and 
you know, am I a rock star? Do I think of myself as a rock star? Yeah, um, yeah. And why why don't I think of that? Is it because of like the image that I have in my head of what a rock star is? Um, but when you talk about your niece saying that she believes you're a rock star, I'm like, yeah. well, look at that. Like maybe she didn't she didn't have um, she wasn't primed <laughs> to yeah. think like of what a rock star is. Exactly. And so she just sees you for you. It doesn't matter like woman, man. Like you yeah. are Misha and you are a rock star. Yes. I feel like I went somewhere and came back. I'm like, who are you people? And why are we all wearing pants? This is radio, for goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> and who are you? <laughs>